Hi, welcome to yet another weather lesson. I'm meteorologist Alexandra Cranford and we are baking today in the kitchen. Yet another weather lesson where we're kind of on the outskirts of meteorology and more just in general science. So I hope that's okay with you guys if you are into baking or if you're into eating something delicious. This is a really fun recipe that I'm doing today and um, it involves science, of course, like all baking does, which I think is why sometimes um, people are drawn to both things, either baking um, and science and or science, and of course eating is in there as well. So today, again, this is an easy um, recipe and it is just something you can throw together really fast and the reason that it goes so fast is science. It's the baking powder in it, which we will talk about in a second. But this is what we're making today, almond cherry bread. So for me, these are a couple of really nice flavors. I hope you like them too. And what we're going to do is just make our uh, dry ingredients, put them all together, make our wet ingredients, put all those together, and then we're going to combine them and bake them. So again, really easy recipe. I hope you guys like it. And really the only super special thing that you would need, I think most of this is just kind of general baking stuff that we all have pretty much, or you know, we used to have before it got hard to get some ingredients at the grocery store. But what we do have for the special ingredients, I would say is almonds. You do need almonds. And then also cherries. So today I'm using like a canned cherry and I just wanted to show you which one um, I'm using. I don't know. I just picked this up at the baking spot, the baking aisle, and there are different kinds of cherries. This is what I used. So I know it's sometimes hard, of course, when the cherries aren't in season to find um, like nice um, pre, you know, washed and everything, fresh cherries that can be kind of difficult. So I just want to show you. I use cherries. I drain them and then I'm chopped them up to put them into the recipe and I save the juice because you'll notice that the juice goes in as well um, or kind of like the syrup kind of juice that it comes in right so here are the ingredients and it looks like a lot but it's really not that much um, it's melted butter some sugar again the cherry juice that you drained from the can two eggs, a little bit of milk, and some almond extract if you have it. You could also use vanilla, or I actually used a tiny little bit of um, Grand Marnier. I keep that way in the back of my um, pantry just in case I run out of vanilla or almond extract, which I actually have run out of both. Um, then you need, so that's it for the, um, the wet ingredients that you would combine. Um, in another bowl, we'll be putting in the flour. We'll put in some baking powder, which we'll talk about the science of in just a second. And then we'll also do some salt. And then that's it for the kind of dry ingredients. Then we add our two little add-ins to make it an almond cherry bread. We're gonna add in some almonds and some cherries, the drained chopped cherries. So to get into the little bit of science first, and then we will start putting everything together. We are using today, remember if you were with me for a weather lesson, actually we've done a couple that involve yeast breads, where you put in the instant or dried yeast, the yeast begins to feed on the sugar, it uh, creates a fermentation reaction and it creates these bubbles of air and around that the gluten strands of the, the protein in the flour begin to develop and it creates this wonderful um, yeasty bread with all of this uh, you know kind of science going into it so we've done that a couple of times but today's is a quick easy method so instead of the yeast which takes time to um, get the fermentation process going you leave it to prove for an hour you come back you have to leave it to prove for a little bit longer this one is so fast and the reason for that is that we're not using um, a yeast leavener we are using a chemical leavener which would be either a baking soda or in this case a baking powder so just a couple of things about this really and we will start baking. Um, the baking soda um, is a base, and what you would do is usually when you have a recipe that has baking soda in it, and is going to create eventually a chemical reaction, the acid plus the base, and that would release carbon dioxide bubbles. So that is the way that you get it to rise when you're using a recipe with baking soda. Um, so what about baking powder then? Baking powder really just kind of already has that stuff in it together to start with. So it has about a quarter of it is baking soda. And then it also has the acid already in here in an in form. And then it also has a little bit of cornstarch in it as well. So for a recipe that uses baking soda to rely on the bubbles and the reaction and get the rise from this, 
Again, you would need baking soda and plus you would notice that the recipe also has some sort of acid like a lemon juice or um, cream of tartar or something like that. But with baking powder a lot of times, this is all you, that you need to go in because it already has baking soda in it and it also has um, the acid already ready to go, although it is um, waiting on the liquid that you add it to to begin the process of releasing the carbon dioxide, getting into those um, air bubbles, creating those pockets of air, and letting them rise, and then when you put it in the oven, it kind of sets everything and eventually creates that um, kind of hard structure that keeps the air in it, and then you have this beautiful rise on your baked good. So again, um, for our cherry almond bread or almond cherry bread, what we're going to do is first combine the dry ingredients, nope, the wet ingredients, then we're going to do the dry ingredients, and then we'll just add our little add-ons. So I will start with the melted butter, and I have some on my plate here, and it's really just as easy. you put all this in, and then you combine them, and you pop it in the oven. I, by the way, have my oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I have my butter, then I add sugar, came out in a big plop. Um, I have beaten up the eggs, you need two eggs, so I just have a little thing, I just kind of put it into my little uh, container, beat it around a little bit, put that in. And what else do we need? A little bit of the drained cherry juice, and again, I just put this over a strainer and just kind of caught it in a cup, and this is what I'm using to get some of the color into this little loaf, so um, three tablespoons of that. A little bit of milk, I mentioned about a half cup of milk, and I think that's it for the wet ingredients. So that's it. So get it into your bowl, mix it around, and it kind of turns this really pretty sort of um, mauve lavender sort of shade. And if you were baking with me last week, we were making um, lavender meringues. Remember, it was such a pretty dry day last week. Never today, I'm looking outside in my um, little area outside here, and there's sun, there's clouds. It's kind of balmy and breezy and we do have storms coming on Thursday by the way so if you've been watching us on eyewitness news I just finished our noon newscast and we were talking about the chance for a bit of maybe strong or severe weather tomorrow so um, we're going to be watching for that but today um, not such a high rain chance just yet so I have all my liquid ingredients here I now am gonna combine my dry ingredients so as I mentioned it was um, a cup and a half of flour and then the all-important baking powder, of course, with the acid and the base, they will combine into a little chemical reaction, release the carbon dioxide, and this way we don't have to deal with um, yeast, although I love dealing with yeast, but <laughs> this is just a faster bread for today. So also a teaspoon of salt goes in there, and I just chopped up some almonds. So I had some whole almonds. If you have sliced almonds or what slivered almonds, you could use any of those, but I just used what I had. So I had whole raw almonds and I just chopped them up, put them in, about a three quarters of a cup of that. So now let's see, I will just kind of stir this up. Again, this is like such, such an easy, fun little recipe and it does smell like pretty amazing when it is baking. So I have enjoyed that as I was baking one, which I'll show you in a second. And then really this recipe is um, very simple. You just kind of combine the two. I'm just gonna do it all at once um, and get everything in. And after this, I'm just going to um, stir it around enough to combine it and then I'm going to add the chopped up cherries that we talked about. Um, so again, I just got a can of cherries, drained it, used the lemon, or uh, used the cherry juice in the wet ingredients, and now I'm going to add the actual cherry bits, which I just chopped up. I drained the can, chopped up the cherries, and I'm going to pop that in as well. So I think I have everything in here now. Um, stir it around, super easy. Um, really nothing, as I mentioned at the beginning, of um, extremely exotic about these ingredients besides just remembering to get that can of cherries um, and some almonds on hand and really that's the main thing of course with this add-in um, for the add-ins for this bread. So I have a loaf pan here. I'm going to use this but my previous one I did use a circle pan. I'm a big fan of using different pans, whatever pans that you have ready to go so mine are different shapes um, but I'm using a loaf pan for this and again it's kind of a pretty batter I think. It's kind of this lavender sort of color I guess it looks a little bit brown on the Facebook Live, doesn't it? But it is actually very pretty. It's 
kind of a mauve pale um, purple. And I'm just going to pour all the ingredients in there. Again, if you like to make things like um, banana bread or mm, you know walnut bread, blueberry muffins, things like that, this is really similar, really different you know, flavor profile, and it's really enhanced by the um, extract, if you do happen to have that almond extract. I love that stuff so much. I put it sometimes in my cocoa, because I drink cocoa almost every day. I love cocoa so much. Um, and I put it in, you know, all sorts of different things. I add it to coffee and stuff sometimes. So I do love that. It makes it taste really nice, um, I think. So if you have that, it's great. But as I mentioned, I didn't have any. So um, I put in a tiny bit of Grand Marnier, um, because I happen to have that. I don't know why I had that and not almond extract, but anyway, <laughs> that's the back of my pantry. So here's our loaf and I have my oven preheated to 350. It's probably going to beep in a second and fake some of you guys out because you'll think, oh, my oven's on? Perhaps. Anyway, so I'm going to put it in. And again, it's really close to being at 350. And then you bake it. Look at that, and it just beeped. Okay, so <laughs> you bake it then for about 55 minutes or so. I kept mine in um, for about 50, maybe three or four minutes, or you could wait until about um, an hour if you think that it needs a little bit longer. One thing to say about this loaf is that, or this bread, is that it's a little bit hard to see when it's done, kind of like banana bread or something like that, because it already has this kind of dark color, so it's hard to really tell exactly. But I did take mine out um, at about 53, 54 minutes, and here, is what I got for my almond cherry loaf. So you can see the little bits of almond in here. You can see the um, bits of cherry. And again, it kind of has this pretty purplish sort of color. So when I was baking this, it was smelling pretty good. And I was excited about getting to try a bit. So um, I think I'm going to take my chance and try a little bit of this loaf. And again, the thing to remember with these breads like this and anything that involves a baking powder or a baking reaction going without yeast. So you can put it in or eggs, um, although this recipe does involve um, two eggs, but you can put it in. Um, it creates um, the reaction of baking soda. Again, you need to add your acid like a lemon juice or something. But if you use what we used, which was baking powder, then it already has an inactive acid in it. And so when you put it in, um, it touches the liquid and it begins the chemical reaction of creating, releasing the carbon dioxide and creating those bubbles and allowing it to rise. So it did indeed allow this beautiful bread to rise. And there are the cherries. You can see the little bits of almond that I kind of chopped up. And again, you can use whatever form of almonds you have. I know they sell all kinds of different types. And here we go. Mm. It's good. It tastes a lot, again, like some of these other sort of breads that you might try if you like, um, again, blueberry, banana, um, things like that that are a little more common which I also love. I made banana bread last week. Um, and Chris Franklin, by the way, big fan of making banana bread as well. <laughs> but anyway, if you want to try something a little bit different, um, you can make this with the cherries and almonds and just kind of get a slightly different flavor, um, but the same kind of rich texture and really nice kind of sweet um, taste as well. So that is the almond cherry bread that we did today. I will post the recipe, and by the way, if you guys are interested in these weather lessons, again, this one more kind of a general baking science lesson, but usually they're about weather too. Um, here are the ingredients, and um, I will post these. By the way, I started posting these on YouTube, um, so you can go to um, my YouTube, which I will post a link to, and you can just see all of them in case you had one that you missed or were interested in. Um, you can see the whole lineup, or if you have a student who is interested in watching some of these science-y type things, you could get the playlist keep them rolling. So that is our little almond cherry bread excursion today. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining me. This is of course me from my home kitchen doing these weather lessons today, more of a baking sort of science lesson, but these are really fun for me. So I appreciate you guys watching and I like to see your comments and see where you guys are watching from. If you um, care to, to let me know, I do like to look at the comments and see all that. So thanks again for joining me. We will be back next week. This is my last one for this week. I will be back on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week on WWL Facebook Live, and we will be doing more um, weather and science topics. Again, these are especially geared for students, also for adults, though, if you're interested in any of this stuff. Um, so 
Yeah, very true. Seeing some of the comments and reading them, and uh, thank you guys for um, for talking to me a little bit over this Facebook Live. We will be back next week. I'll see you on Monday, and of course, we're tracking the weather tomorrow with a chance for some severe weather. So we'll be looking at that closely, and of course, we'll be updating you because um, it looks like it'll be rolling in right now, maybe like late morning, midday, um, possibly, and into the afternoon too. So thanks again. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.